Today is given. It's actually a gift. A little package from me to you. The transmission of prayer through our hearts. The heart of a small group of people who come, who gather with our attention and our devotion to the sacred root of life. And I would say in parentheses, in a time when it's nearly completely forgotten what that is. Magic, medicine, and miracle, a tradition of song. Magic is the gift, the network of animation, the domain of earth. Her tapestry of life, more precise than our minds or our senses are able to perceive. How the bee finds the yellow blossom. This is magic. How the North Star finds the heart of a lonely girl. This is magic. The light structure within life that links the intelligence of all of life. A web of light that is life itself. that is the conversation. This is magic. The marriage of the bee and the blossom is not only honey for our consumption. It is the nature of all life on earth, including humans, to long for and return to our source. Winter, spring, summer, autumn. Winter, spring, summer, autumn. The magicians, the great magicians, before we wanted things for ourselves, before my child was more important than your child. They called it the golden age. The magicians were listening to the magic of the earth in exactly the same way that each bird sings. The source of the river is in the pounding of the waterfall, the sound of without end. There is a hint from the time when women carried light in their hands, when they called the rain with their own tears. They knew power as that which the earth lent them. Traditions of magic given to nourish earth and to praise heaven. The child, when she or he arrives, is already awake. Medicine is what is given, what is revealed to humans. In the weave of life that is on earth, we human beings are given the privilege to stand where heaven and earth meet. A particular, very precise location is given to us. One of the purposes is to receive medicine. Through every age and era, there have been those individuals who have given their labor and their heart to receive, to practice, and to deliver medicine. Traditions, there have been traditions of medicine to reach the great struggles, we might say wars, we might say terrors that humans face, how life is tended in sickness and in health. The physician is the one who is given the responsibility to restore the balance, the Taoists would say, of earth and heaven 
in an individual person. To respond to the disorder that comes to life as a whole, as well as individuals. Life is governed by the hidden current within it. Some have called it prana, some have called it chi, some have called it Jesus. These days I call it light. Because of how that word has been misused. So I want that word to stay alive in my heart the hidden light within matter. Miracles come from heaven. A miracle is an act of grace. When light from a different world, you could say level of consciousness, you could say, from the plane of oneness, comes directly into this world. Where we live an experience of separation. A miracle heals the experience of separation from the source. Perhaps only for a second. of heart surgeons. A physical blindness is removed. A mute child begins to speak. A mental illness is replaced with the direct experience of the divine. A miracle can never be explained. It can be forgotten. And life goes on as if it didn't occur. Many religions, many ancient traditions of medicine were seeded, were begun with miracles. The stories were not forgotten. The stories themselves held a compass. for the human being pointing toward his or her source. In my childhood, it was my physician that kept the door open to grace. He was a normal guy. He smoked two packs of cigarettes a day in the office. He drank too much. But he loved me. And he practiced medicine with respect to the power of the human body and mind to get well. And he taught me that shots don't have to hurt. Not knowing, of course, one day I would be an acupuncturist. He taught me how to needle. I didn't know the miracle he was until he was gone. which I'm very sorry about. But he knew that I loved him and he knew that he held the door for me. The stories hold the compass of the human soul pointing to our source. So what are the stories that we're raising ourselves up with? What are the stories that we must preserve in this time of great darkness. What are the new stories that need to come in? One of the purposes of this school is to receive a medicine for the future. Ready? Something of the past must be preserved in this particular tradition of medicine that some of us practice. 
Probably in your tradition, too, they're secretly physicians. Preparing for a different time and a different need. Magic medicine miracle. This is a very ancient esoteric tradition. Very particular, it's a very particular thread that like other small esoteric schools appears and disappears according to the need of the time. There is an urgent, urgent need for the recognition of the feminine aspect of the divine in the relationship between humanity and the earth. not to mention the evolution of human consciousness. Traditions of medicine, root traditions of medicine, have never been just for humans. Be interesting 200 years from now to look back and see what we What has happened when a lot of human medicine has become so poisonous to other life forms on Earth? I'm not sure that's happened before. So this ancient tradition of song I would say guards, but more interestingly, lives. Those that hear the sound of the humpback whale and go to the edge of the sea and wait. These are ancient, ancient prayers that are imprinted in our hearts. They're in the original design. Some of these songs are coming alive in a very particular way right now in this group of people here incarnated now at this turning point. Those that can remember and empty enough to receive something new. This is how it's done. Esoteric schools, tiny ones, but not mass movements. They work directly in the weave or the song of praise that life is and we it takes us many years to remember even what an esoteric school is a training that undoes you And in this time, in service to life itself, we have put ourselves at risk, deeply. To praise life is to sing. To sing the human note of love, whether you have chemotherapy, penicillin, or spirit burial ground as your medicine. To sing the human note of love is to connect the worlds. And this requires training. There have been surgeons that work in the very fabric of life through an individual. 
through their consciousness. To connect the worlds is to govern. That's another word we've lost recently. We are losing trust in that word, what that word is even. It's a very important word in Chinese medicine to govern. It's the action of the heart. Is to govern the conversation of life exactly as the heart governs the blood. It does not control blood. The gallbladder controls the sinews. See, there's very subtle and deep understanding of the way authority works, the regulation of life. So something of this ancient tradition must be preserved or it will be lost. What is it to train a physician in the difference between governing and controlling? So a tradition of song is given connection to the original design. So healing is not doing something. It's a, it's a practice of intimacy that returns to the original design of a physical heart, of a mental heart, of the heart is the domain of the divine. Sometimes all three. The songs, I mean, there are as many songs as there are beings, species on the planet. But the songs given in a tradition Probably at one time, there were many more. And people in my job were trained in a, in a little in a different way than now. In this school, we work with six very particular songs, which are essentially, in simple English, alchemical prayers, alchemical protocols, maps that are given directly into the heart. So some of these songs become medicine in acupuncture because there's a tradition of understanding medicine as restoring the sound of the soul. So we carry that tradition in understanding. But they're not just medicine in that sense. They're miracles, the song. They are light given directly from the plane of oneness into this plane where we experience separation. They are teachings. They are the breath of the chain of beings that guard creation as a revelation of God. Please replace any word that works better for you than God, if that one doesn't. We think in this time that magic is something great. Something to harness to influence, to maybe to vanquish evil. Superheroes, it's magic. Makes me more powerful than you. This is not a tradition that lives in that understanding of magic. It's magic is imminent. It's the imminence of the divine in creation. It's already here. It's what we're made of. Physical part of us. Physical mental part of us. 
So a school, a tradition, where we speak of magic, we have a little bit of, um, we have a lot of misunderstandings to get rid of. That we become smaller in the presence of the magic of creation. Smaller and smaller. Most of us had experiences as children, probably. When you go outside and look at the stars, and finally, all is well. Just for a minute. I'm little enough. Americans in particular have lost this understanding of what spiritual life is. It's not about getting bigger and better, prettier and thinner and richer and happier and more successful and, and, and. To be found, to be lost again, to be found, to be lost again in love. It's a terrible sorrow that we've lost this connection to our place and our purpose. I don't know what you'd say about the most epidemic illness of our time, but one of the things I would say is loneliness. Clothed in as many dresses as you can find at Macy's, but underneath it. A blankness, a hunger, it's always surprising to me that people don't have the more conversations. I always walk the streets listening to what people are talking about. What are we talking about in our country, in our time? And I'm Always so surprised that I'm not hearing the sound of the heartbreak, of noticing that people aren't really looking at each other anymore. Just in 25 years, I mean, I'm not even talking 200 years. The magic 25 years ago of going to a cafe and just greeting people as they sat down. Who's going to come in the door? What's going to happen today? These are very human things that we've lost. And if you haven't lost them, look at our 18-year-olds. We're responsible. So this is a tradition that got, that's really here to guide souls home. It's a very ancient, ancient tradition. Souls come for real water. They come to be cared for. They care. Souls bring the person to be seen, to have a place where they're watered, and nourished. But in this time, there is such a need for our attention to be in service to humanity and the earth in the way we are together. The light that comes through from another plane for all of life. Breaking down a certain elitism that's found its way into even our most sacred places of prayer. Mercy, the name given to 
God on earth. And she is said to be more beautiful than a human can bear if she shows herself. The human heart breaks. <laughs> so we work this ancient tradition, we work in very simple ways, one person at a time. The magic of creation. To be reconnected with the magic of creation, you will not suffer loneliness as you did. Right? You are never alone. If your consciousness is awake, in how you live inside of the weave. The sacred root of our civilization is severed, but it can be absolutely reconnected one person at a time. Medicine, I would say in the esoteric tradition of wisdom learning, it takes several years to reach the root of the illness that brought us here. The human ego is very proud, even though it's terrified. So esoteric training is something that doesn't happen quickly. It's, a, it's alchemical. It's a descent, not an ascent. It is my experience in this time that surrender, the giving of oneself to what one holds to be most holy, in some cases is almost impossible because of the damage to the feminine in men and women and the earth. So there is a certain medicine in this tradition of song that is mending a level of violation to the fabric of life on earth, that we are looking everywhere for a cure. So there is medicine. There must be medicine in this time. We are very, very confused. Some of the very deep curses inside of the human mind that are ripping our world into pieces across color, gender, many things. These are structures in the mind of the collective that are very, very powerful. And they must be healed. They must be mended. Another good idea is not going to do it. It is one of the jobs I was given to unravel a small group of people, literally unravel from these structures. And it happens slowly, carefully. The human mind is quite fragile requires a lot of love. And miracles. It's one of the only things from my childhood that from my 
experience of, of the Christianity that was the root of my family's upbringing. It was the miracles of Jesus that had any, was the only reason I agreed to go to church. Mm-hmm. There was something about those stories preserved that reached me. They reached underneath or they, around my politics of religion, which I had even as a child. <laughs> So I had a little bit of a, I had a little bit of a context because of the stories that were kept of what what miracles were, what it was to not forget miracles, that they were even possible. And as this tradition was given, being given back, before I knew what that was, even that that can be. I was present to real miracles. And in the presence of a real miracle, one is changed. I remember saying, I'm never going to work again. I will never have a vacation again. Perhaps it's the same as being present to a real horror. It might work the same way. I was no longer bound to what I thought life was, what I who I thought God was. Certainly what I thought a human being was supposed to be about. It was instantaneous and I um, was disoriented for many, many months. And just as the story of Jesus told, when Mary Magdalene, when the seven demons were taken out of Mary Magdalene, all that was left was love between the physician and the patient. That too was my experience. She is in me and I in her. It was as dramatic as that. And it was after that, not long, but two years after that, that I was brought to the foot of this tradition. And that the light of the divine can be and is rekindled. is the time for that to happen for a soul. And everything changes. And that miracle then is tended. It's my job. The level of cynicism and North Americans, I don't know about Europeans, but North Americans is shocking. How deep the materialism has gotten to us. To, to be led something far greater than anything I could speak of. To give myself to something of which I can never speak. To devote myself to 
that which has made us. It wasn't an idea anymore. So, this ancient tradition has never worked in large mass movements. It's a tradition of love. Most of us have been trained to work in the darkest of places on earth, inside of the human mind. We're trained to know the difference. I, we had a dream come in the other night about the two kinds of night. The dazzling night of the divine and the night of human forgetting. It's a tradition that works in both. what the human heart was created to be. The Taoists say the purpose of a human being is to stand between heaven and earth and praise heaven. The Sufis would say the purpose of a human being is to remember the name of God in every breath. That is why we are here, so that all of life and evil. In esoteric tradition, whether you go down through the Christians or the Jews or the Buddhists or the tribal people of South America or the Inuit of the North Pole, any esoteric tradition, when you get just a little ways down, you're all saying the same thing. The road from the many to the one. Um, Laura, could you talk about um, something I've had in my mind is is um, the the conjoining of opposites the that you you're talking about going into the human mind and and the darkness there and and um, taking the energy in the world that it really is quite dark and hellish and sort of bringing it together with the light that you're talking about. And because I've just been thinking about not trying to avoid the hellishness, you know, because my natural thing is to kind of go, I'm so glad it's not me out there going crazy, you know, kind mm -hmm. of thing. But I'm just thinking about sort of conjoining them so that that healing that you're talking about? Um, yeah, I'm happy to talk from this place. I think where I would start, though, is I think to have this conversation, you have to clarify levels. This is one of the things that's gotten so tangled in North American spirituality, is when you're talking about conjoining opposites, mm -hmm. you're talking about the inner... <coughs> psychological into alchemical work inside the psyche of an individual. Mm -hmm. To mix levels and then make it political, i.e. going into the world at large, the collective darkness out in the world, mm -hmm. uh, needs a different language, I think. So I think the first conversation in the traditional alchemical tradition, which interestingly, the Western alchemical tradition and the Taoist alchemical tradition are very, very similar. Hmm. I never know how to say his name. Paracelsus, Paracelsus. Paraclesis? Added salt yeah. later. But before that, lead and mercury were the two base metals that were worked with both in the West and in the Taoist tradition. And so there were stages to that alchemical work, the great work, they called it, of the path of the immortals. 
which is, one could say, the goal of all esoteric tradition, to come to that which is eternal. Mm -hmm. And in that, the union of the individual soul occurs with the great soul. So the work of that, the first um, stage, alchemical stage, is disintegration, negredo, breaking down into the primal material. Mm -hmm. It's a breaking apart. And then there's a stage, um, the whitening, albedo, where the parts come together. But that isn't what you're talking about. Parts come together. It's only after that that you start to have the work of the union of opposites inside of the individual psyche. So in this... A after the purification. After the purification. Things are broken down and then they come back together and that's white. Right. And then it goes to red and then it goes to yellow. Um, so as good Americans, we very often want to fast forward to union. And partly it's because of our spiritual materialism. And partly it's because teachings have been lost. So partial pieces of traditions have come to the West. The tradition that I come out of is a tradition of the remembrance of the name of God. And it is restored. That light is restored. Whether I call the name of God a chickadee, mm -hmm. or the Almighty, it's the same light. Mm -hmm. It manifests differently. So the remembrance of what is sacred, the remembrance of oneness, is how I am taught and I teach of how we walk into the world. Mm. So in trying to engage is more, more aggressive. You can get into trouble. You can, the most dangerous thing is hubris. Mm -hmm. You think you're doing something. You're going to change the world, save the world. And you get entangled more deeply. Mm -hmm. And you start influencing life with magic, right. spiritual magic. Right. Not to be advised for one such as you. Um, the the reason I'm separating it is, is that because so many teachings have been lost and because there's not very many places left where the whole journey can happen, the alchemical vessel is secure enough. Mm -hmm. is, this is another place where there's cynicism and confusion. And we fast forward to ideas of union. Mm -hmm. um, and the burning the breaking down, the burning, is not held in love. Mm -hmm. And then it gets all really, can get very crazy, right? Because then we mix up the levels where we think certain negative experiences, quote unquote, that we have in the world are spiritual. So it, it can get very confusing. Is, am I making sense to you? Oh, Perfect. Okay. Abs you're speaking absolutely directly to what's happening with me. You know, the tradition I come from, the, the, there are different traditions that make this journey using in different ways. Certain Buddhist traditions don't work with love, per se. Mm -hmm. They work with a certain light. They work with the emptiness. Right. So, you know, we... We each find a resonance, hopefully, mm -hmm. in time. Um, this tradition works with love, divine love. So, and there, there's a sense of protection about mm -hmm. the purification. There's yeah. a real sense of protection. Yeah. And like you're saying, 
I, I go, but things are so crazy out there. Isn't there some way, you know, I should be doing something? And yet I end up with this sense of protect, not isolation, but protection and sense of protection and purification. You know, one of the most beautiful things about a light of oneness, songs of oneness, is that in, in that light, I always say the light of my teacher's eye. How you are unique is more clear. Oneness isn't um, the loss of one's uniqueness. Because each being is a, is, is a unique manifestation of the divine. Mm -hmm. So inside of the song, or the song inside of your heart, there's not the same confusion as the lower nature is undone and mm -hmm. gotten rid of <laughs> mm -hmm. um, about where one has been placed. Yes, there are people who are in public, have vocations that are public and have responsibility. You know, at different years, it really varies. I don't think there are a lot right now. But say in the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th century in Central Asia, this tradition of masters, many, many people were involved with the kings. They were helping mm -hmm. to make decisions. It was following Genghis Khan. There was a time when the esoteric tradition there, they had to rebuild society because psyches were shattered. There was terrible confusion about what it was to be a person. So in that time, groups like this, for instance, one of the things that a group that is in the lineage that I'm in did is the teacher had them go out every day and wash the babies because there were terrible epidemics. And they didn't know about germs. They, did, they didn't have a consciousness of germs, but the teacher was given the task for the students. So they would do their morning prayers and then they would go into the streets and they would wash the children. And so the children didn't die. So it's a, there's a, there is a way we interface, but it, changing the world is not a great idea for someone who is as serious about truth as you are. Mm -hmm. It's a position, it is an aggressive position. You know, I mean, in, in this tradition, you become a place of remembrance. So it's not like going into an ashram right. at, at 18,000 feet. It's not retreating to have a spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Those days are not now. Mm -hmm. There are a few individuals that still are holding certain places, but that is not the work in this time. Mm -hmm. You're in the world. And you, the heart becomes, as the heart is purified, and the divinity of life is restored, you become a place. Not your farm, you. <laughs> There's a beautiful story that my teacher tells of being on an airplane, and he was sitting next to a young woman. And he looked over and he saw that the light in her heart had just come on. Which, of course, usually means discontent, depression, anguish, nothing makes sense. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. But he could see that the light had just, something had come on, and he happened to be sitting next to her. And he said it was the most beautiful thing to see, that that light that comes on in the heart, that it's a very specific, you notice it in the eye of someone. Right in. that there's, there's a light in the person that wants to remember what is most holy. One could say, remember themselves. In another time, that worked great, but I'm sorry in this time. Those words don't work anymore, I don't think, because they get all tangled in finding out my soul's purpose and becoming my true self, and I don't mean to sound cynical, but it, a lot of that work has a very short shelf life. 
the soul does not tell you who it is. It guides you. And slowly, slowly, God willing, one remembers where one came from. It's a, it's a confusion, I think, for a lot of us. Because the collective has so much fear in it right now. Everywhere you turn. The aggression and the terror at the collective level of humanity is maybe unprecedented. Um, mostly because of the communications that are, that are here now. So that I'm listening to the voice of children in Damascus. You see what happened with the storm in Indonesia. So it's conscious. Whereas it's not that the suffering itself is new, but our connection to the collective, the one world we are. So, you know, we're not doing very well with this fear, as we all know, everyone in this room. So what vanquishes fear but love? And as my teacher says, we're in the grace business. <laughs> so. Spiritual life gets simpler and simpler. More difficult, but simpler. It's very difficult to bear the pain of what is happening. What we are here to witness. It's very, very difficult. I don't know how people do it without companionship. Real companionship. Because of course the answer isn't to shut our eyes. Of course the answer isn't to go numb. Of course, the answer isn't to go create an elite spiritual clan that has a perfect little dome somewhere. At least for me. So, I think it's one of the it's one of the things in the work this time that actually touches my heart very deeply is. People who have some sort of resonance to a mystical path, it, there's a there's a harshness that many of us know, remember. You know, the severing of attachments. Uh, integration of what has been rejected. It takes tremendous strength and a certain craziness to want to do it. But one of the things that's really touched me so much in this time is a certain gentleness that is so needed. The feminine has been so devastated. We put God in heaven in the enlightenment, right? a transcendent God. And the work right now is not that. And so there's, a, there's this tremendous um, tenderness about remembering that we need each other. Mm -hmm. And that there's something that one of the guardian prophets, teachers of this line is Kidder, the one who, the green, the green prophet, he, the friend of anyone seeking truth, he's known as. And so Kidder, as a teacher, you meet him or her or it 
the place where the two seas meet, which is the place where human and divine come together. And so there's something about our humanity and our relations to one another that is more in the teachings now than at other times because it's needed. <laughs>